providing information covering events, activities, and news from Columbus Consolidated Government. You're watching CCG TV News Watch. Well, good afternoon, and thank y'all for being here. Uh, we want to welcome you to what we think is a really, really exciting uh, announcement. It's a rollout of two different initiatives that we think are uh, under the well are under the mayor's health commission that are going to have a significant impact on uh, on this community. Uh, the members of this commission have been working uh, towards a goal of making medical screenings and and resources healthy nutritious foods and recreational opportunities uh, available to all parts of the community through more mobile resource units. Um, we believe the health of a community has a direct impact on poverty, scholastic success, crime, all kinds of social issues. The commission's co-chair by Dr. Stephen Leichter uh, and Mr. Phil Schuler. Dr. Leichter, uh, a, a noted endocrinologist, will head up the educational component uh, and Mr. Schuler will coordinate the mobile units, and I cannot say enough good things about the amazing work of the board, uh, the commission that they have led, uh, and, and the partnerships that have been created uh, that are, are geared towards making uh, this a success. Um, I, I gotta tell you, the city of Columbus has also uh, helped to supplement this. We've placed kiosks in, touchscreen kiosks in five of our rec centers, nine more coming very shortly. And in addition to being able to provide access to um, job opportunities, uh, job skill training and development, uh, food banks, other services, they're also gonna have the ability to identify where these mobile resource units are at any given time. Our, our, uh, our ultimate goal is to have it real time where through GIS, if somebody wants to know where one of these facilities, where, where one of these resource vans is, they can go identify it uh, on that screen. And in addition, uh, Sheriff Greg Countryman uh, had been awarded a grant that allowed him to purchase a mobile gaming facility. And they are also going to be a part of, of this initiative uh, when available to, to make that happen. Um, the, um, the educational uh, component and the mobile resources will provide a, a, an incredible opportunity to benefit the citizens of this, of this community, particularly those who are in underserved areas and have, have transportation issues. Uh, as I said, the board has is, is done just an absolutely incredible job. City Councilor Pops Barnes was at the genesis of this when he and Dr. Leichter was talking about the educational component. What started out as a, 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 a desire to try to go out to the neighborhoods and create opportunities for them to engage in activities that would, would, would lead to a healthier lifestyle has turned into a very comprehensive approach to benefiting the entire community. So I'm gonna ask Dr. Leichter to come up and say a few words. He will be followed by uh, uh, Mr. Schuler, And then at the end, we'll all come back up here and I'll probably ask Councilor Barnes to come up with his medical background and try to answer any questions. Dr. Leichter. Good afternoon, I'm Steve Leichter. I'm the senior endocrinologist uh, at Piedmont Healthcare, not only in Columbus, but all of Piedmont Healthcare. And I'm very excited about seeing this come to fruition after two years. Um, we have divided the activities of the commission into two phases and they complement each other. The phase I'm going to chair is called the health advocacy phase and this is to give a simple message to the entire community to try to deal with the fact that Columbus <clears throat> has a higher impact of diabetes, stroke, heart disease, cancer, and other related issues than other metropolitan areas in the state of Georgia. And <clears throat> I was asked by Pops and the mayor if there was a common theme that might unify all these diseases together, and just as they were asking me this, there was a common theme evolving in the diabetes scientific literature, and it's the apple body shape. The World Health Organization defines an apple body shape as someone who has a waist size that's more than one times the hip size. So if you divide the size of your hips 
into the size of your waist, and if the result is one or greater, that's an apple body shake. The significance of that is that the fat pad in the abdomen that gives people an apple shape makes more hormones than any other tissue in the body, and you don't want most of those hormones. One group of hormones blocks insulin from working and creates what we call insulin resistance, and this contributes to weight gain. The other group of hormones, which we're going to focus on a lot, are called inflammatory kinins, or hormonal factors that inflame body tissue. And these hormones are secreted more in people with an apple shape. The more of an apple shape they have, the more of these hormones they make. And these hormones attack the heart, blood vessels, the pancreas, bone, and joints. And so people with an apple body shape have a higher risk of heart disease, stroke, cancer, diabetes, osteoporosis, osteoarthritis, and up to 14 times higher risk of requiring joint replacement surgery as people who do not have an apple shape. Eating high-fat food, not exercising, increases the secretion of these hormones. So this is a little different health message than what we've had before which was simply, you need to eat well to stay healthy. This is a much more detailed message. If you want to avoid having cancer in your lifetime, if you want to avoid having a heart attack, stroke, or requiring a knee replacement, you've got to avoid high-fat food, you need to exercise, and try to manage your apple shape. We've developed a lot of partnerships over the last two years throughout the community. Uh, with many key organizations, including Piedmont Healthcare, St. Emory St. Francis Healthcare, the Health Department, <clears throat> city services, <clears throat> different practices in town like Columbus Clinic and Horizons, and a wide variety of organizations that we're excited are going to be a part of this. <clears throat> we worked hard on how to get the message of the Apple Body Shape out. And what we're going to try to do is to work with each organization, whether it's AFLAC or the health department or the city schools, and shape messages to their configuration so that we can put the messages through their channels, their internet, their printed material, messages to their consumers, whether it's churches, and I'm going to come back to them in a second, <clears throat> or whether it's employees, so that people are much more aware that if you have an apple shape, you have a much higher risk of disease in your lifetime. Now, <clears throat> I've done things before with my friend Pops Barnes, who was a nurse that had to put up with me for years at Piedmont. And <clears throat> we've done a lot of work through the faith community. And Pops has shown me how dealing with the faith community is a very important way of impacting on people in the city. And so I don't want you to think that that's not going to be an important part of our efforts. Now, <clears throat> getting the message out also requires giving people the opportunity to follow a healthy lifestyle. And I'm so thankful that my friend, Mr. Phil Schuler, agreed two years ago to chair that section. And I'm going to ask Phil to come up and make some comments. Thank you, Dr. Leiter. Um, I am so excited to be a part of this initiative. Um, in, all the, uh, in all the things that I think Mayor Henderson has done or the ideas and visions that he's had, in my opinion, this is the absolute best. Um, it's very clear that uh, God expects leaders of a community to take care of the people who are struggling, to help those who are underserved, uh, who are disadvantaged. And this initiative uh, really has just brought together so many really great leaders around Columbus um, in a partnership, as Dr. Leichter was saying and the mayor was saying, we are working with everyone from uh, you know, Piedmont to Emory to other uh, healthcare providers in the community, United Way, uh, Feeding the Valley, just there's too many that uh, there's no way I could name them all, but so many great people, the Department of Health, um, and 
what's so exciting is that when we bring everybody together, we have a, an ability to synergize and to have a collective impact that is so much greater than any of us could ever have on our own. Um, wisdom from Ecclesiastes uh, talks about two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. And then it states a threefold cord is not quickly broken. And so the best part about what we're doing is to bring everybody together um, and to work together. And so on my side of, of the initiative, uh, we've put together four, three, uh, three arms of a mobile vehicle program that will go out into uh, targeting these underserved areas. The first arm is going to be the mobile health clinic. Piedmont um, has had a mobile health clinic for a while and uh, they have joined with this initiative to really coordinate with everybody else and to ramp up what they're doing. The focus of the medical health unit is really gonna be to, to bring access to medical care to those people in Columbus who just struggle to be able to get to the doctor or to have that access. When we looked at some of the statistics early on at the, the start of putting this initiative together, Columbus has just a disproportionately higher incidence of uninsured, people that just don't have health insurance, um, a much higher incidence of diabetes. Uh, when you look at the rates of how many people die from cardiovascular disease, it's a lot more people in Columbus per average than it is in other, any other place in Georgia or the nation, this, the averages in Georgia or the nation. This, this burden is, it's just so much greater in our city. And so this initiative is focused on helping reduce that burden and really raise, just shape a better future for Columbus by improving the health of everybody. So the, the mobile health clinic, the Department of Health also just recently got a mobile health clinic. That's gonna join as well there. They're gonna really try to uncover chronic illness that's underlying that citizens have, maybe bad diabetes or other things that are going on. And then once they uncover that, get those people connected to a primary care physician who can bring them under their care and really get that under control. The second arm is gonna be a mobile vehicle that's gonna be a mobile farmer's market. Now that's gonna be run by UGRO. Um, Olivia Amos is heading up that arm of the program. And that's gonna bring food to people who really need it. When you, we looked at the numbers uh, again at the start, food insecurity, there's an incidence of 21% of people in Columbus reported that they just don't have enough food. They're struggling. And that's versus 16% for the state of Georgia. Um, so Columbus, again, there with the food insecurity, a higher burden than the state and then the national average as well. And so uh, in partnership with Feeding the Valley, they're gonna take food out with this mobile vehicle and just give away healthy food to many of these people who just don't have enough. The second part of that program is going to be to um, connect with local farmers um, like Mercy Med and, and others in the area and also offer those people the ability to purchase healthier foods and they'll get through a, a sponsorship and a partnership with some other nonprofit organizations they'll be able to get twice as much food uh, using their SNAP benefits so it's a really great program the third mobile vehicle program is going to be uh, under the leadership of Holly Browder and Parks and Rec, the partnership with them. And she's gonna run a mobile, a Roland Rec Mobile is what she calls it, a, a vehicle that's gonna go out and just try to get people in the community moving, get them active, um, exercise a little bit, have some fun. Um, that's gonna be focused more, especially with the kids, trying to get them uh, just out and you know away from the screens and just doing some things. And now of course, that activity is a big part of overall health. And so with, with the partnership with these three arms, the mobile health vehicles, the mobile food vehicle, and the, the mobile recreation vehicle, we are excited that this program is really going to be able to make just a tremendous positive impact uh, on the health and the well-being of our community as a whole. So I'm going to finish with that section, and then uh, I guess everybody's coming back up to answer questions. Yeah, if, if there are any questions, and I'm going to ask Council Barnes to come up. Council Barnes has been an incredible advocate for health care issues while on council and even prior to. 
and he, he can answer some of these questions as well. If you have any questions, just uh, help us out. So the timeline is uh, the mobile recreation vehicle has been ordered. Um, interestingly, the, what we really wanted uh, would have taken two years to get. And so we settled for an F-350, you're going to get a trailer. Holly Browder said that it is anticipated that we should be getting that late spring, early summer. The uh, other vehicles, the mobile health clinic, uh, Piedmont's doing some renovations on that right now. Um, and the mobile food market. Those are expected to kind of really be getting out in the community uh, late March. So all of it, late sp spring, early summer, we really hope to have kind of everything coming together and, and getting out there. Let me add one thing to that too, that one of the visions of this, they're gonna have their own route. So they, they can go do some of the screening now, they can go deliver some of the food and go make that available to some of the, the food deserts in our community. But the exciting piece is what they do is, is Phil's talking about, about the synergy created from all of these rolling together. Because we envision a time, and, and by the way, even though we're waiting on a vehicle, we're not waiting. So if we get an opportunity to get all these rolling, we're going to pull an older F-150 and a trailer. We're going to get the stuff out there in the neighborhood. What we, do, we want to do is just go out there and just kind of drop some barricades on the street and set up shop and trumpet it through churches and through other, other uh, organizations. And, and the idea is to People who can't get to these types of resources, we're going to bring the resources to them. Sue? So, is, is this a model unique to the city of Columbus, the community of Columbus, or is this a model that we're trying to replicate somewhere else and what have been the successes? No, this is Columbus. Wow, that's great. Yeah, so there are um, other types of mobile vehicles in other places. Uh, there are mobile health clinics, or there are, or even some mobile pantries, not as many of those, but, but what's really unique to Columbus is this, uh, the Mayor's Health Commission that is really forming the unity and the collaborative partnership and the synergy so that all of those uh, are really working together. And now on top of that, my side of the operation is to make sure that there's a filtering of the information about why this is so important for people through the providers in town, health organizations in town, and other organizations as well, such as the colleges, schools, so that there's an underpinning of why is it important? Because up to now, having done this as long as I've done this, I've seen all kinds of health and wellness messages. You know, you really need to get healthy. Yeah, I'll do that tomorrow, but today I'm having. <clears throat> but this is a lot different. And we use that in our diabetes center. If you eat high fat food, that's going to give you heart attack. That's eventually going to give you cancer. And people don't know that. They don't know that they're making these hormones from belly fat. That's causing the acceleration of the processes that give people those diseases. So it's trying to get an underpinning of awareness of why this is important, and then the opportunity to exercise those up, uh, steps necessary to make it for that person a reality. And, and so to build on that, uh, uh, the, the mobile resource units, one of the things we're excited about and the health piece is, is critical, but the recreation I think is gonna help to build some excitement around the, 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 these three different vehicles arriving. And what it also allows us to do where we have some limited resources from Parks and Rec, and right now with labor shortage, it's hard for us to find programmers. This allows us to put a programmer in that vehicle and go to these neighborhoods that may not have a rec center right on the water. And let me give you a link of how this scientifically occurs. You go exercise from the fat pad in your abdomen, you make a hormone you never heard of before called adenopectin, which protects your arteries from the attack from these inflammatory chemicals that are coming out. So all you have to do is exercise 30 minutes, walk vigorously 30 minutes from making that hormone. Mike, did you have some? Oh, sorry. Um, what's kind of the, how often do you guys plan on having these units go out? Is it weekly, monthly, weekdays, weekends? So weekly, um, and um, we'll start out obviously with a smaller scale, but the, the goal is to really ramp that up um, to um, multiple days a week. And then we really would like to plan uh, successive 
big event days, if you will, where they're all just kind of, you know, connecting and, and all of the vehicles are there at the same place and just so that it can be a place where people can just get whatever they need, food, medical care, um, just have some fun, exercise, just, just doing it, everything all there in one location and in the neighborhoods where they live. Yeah. Uh, I had a question about um, how does the Mayor's Commission decide sort of what areas uh, these units go into? What were the conversations around that? What are the thresholds for, yes, we need to go to these areas? So a couple of parts. Um, we, through the partnership where everybody just kind of comes together, and typically because of COVID, we've done that virtually. Um, we'll work with the United Way, the Columbus Housing Authority, Piedmont and, and Emory both. They have data on the zip codes, if you will, where there's a higher burden of these conditions and, and uh, the places where there's a higher incidence of food insecurity. So just through kind of everybody coming together and talking through that, looking at the data, that's how we identify you know, the places. And, and honestly, those are usually the same places. The places where there's a high food insecurity it happens to be the same place where there's a high incidence of diabetes, cardiovascular uh, disease, those type of things. And so it just, um, it, it really all comes together very well that way. And I think you'll see that most of these locations and the schedules being driven by the Mayor's Commission. Now there'll be input provided by City Council and by other individuals, like if they know some areas within their district that is really struggling, uh, either having access to food or just, that they're not taking advantage. Some, of the, some folks, let's face it, aren't even gonna to go to a church uh, to get some of these resources. So uh, it, it, it will in all likelihood be driven from a, from a scheduling standpoint by the church. Were there, just a quick follow up, were there particular areas in town or neighborhood or zip codes where you guys saw immediate need and, and where were they? So, uh, I think we have to leave it in front of you, but. Well, I, 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 I I wrote it down. So initially, some of the areas of focus are going to be um, Wilson Apartments areas, Patriot Point, um, Arbor Point, Warren Williams, Nicholas Ter Nicholson Terrace, BJ Knight. Um, and those, again, those are a lot of the areas where we were talking actually yesterday and, and Olivia Amos had mentioned those were the recommended areas from the Housing Authority. And then Melanie's Close with Piedmont, who kind of runs the mobile health clinic, was like, we're going to a lot of those same areas, so there's just that overlap. So, um, but the, so the housing authority has been a big help in that. Um, but the the hospitals also gather data, which kind of ties into, um, for instance, where they see in the most readmissions come from, um, those type of things as well. Does that, does that answer? Thank you. You mentioned that Columbus led the state and probably the nation in those type of situations in terms of heart disease, strokes, diabetes. How did Columbus get that? I'm assuming when you mentioned Columbus, you're going to probably have to throw Phoenix City and surrounding area in the same basket. What did this area do differently, and how did we, how did we get here? I'd like to answer that question. That, I, I've been waiting. <laughs> Mike, you must have been reading my mind. You know me. So, <laughs> yes. Yeah, that, the ESP. I want to tell you, this is not a spin off from any other place. That's the exciting part about this. There was a movie a couple of years ago, a fantastic adventure of a voyage. This is a fantastic adventure. You have the vision of the mayor and his desire to do something that will be lasting. What is more lasting than health? And this is what's impactful. It's, this is generational because this cannot fail. You have the mayor's vision. This gentleman here, this doctor here, he's done a number of research. They call us the odd couple. I wonder why. <laughs> they call us the odd couple. <clears throat> this is the best endocrinologist I have ever met. And he lives, breathes, sleeps, dreams, health. So the mayor and my good friend, Steve here, Dr. Leiter got together and they started talking. That was the gem of this. This cannot fail. I want to tell you why. Because you have the educational component, teaching you about apple body shape. You have all the resources from the mayor's office. Come on now. Think about the swath of that and his dream, his baby. 
Then you have Phil. Phil has done a exceptional job. In fact, I think under his uh, under that red tie, there's a little S or something that he's done. Because he's done a lot of work with this here, pulling in all the, the, the parts here. This cannot fail. And the exciting part of that is if you think everyone in this room can identify with someone who has hypertension, heart disease, uh, kidney failure, something that's linked, and as Dr. Leifert said, a lot of people don't realize how intimately that's linked to, to diet, to nutrition, all the things that we're speaking about. And so this is the, this is the time. Every successful adventure had timing in the mix. This is crucial. And the exciting part is that it's emanating from the mayor, the best economicist I know. This cannot fail. I'm excited about it for all of us. And the community is going to wrap this up and gobble this up because this is a win, win, win for Columbus. I'd like to thank the mayor for his concept. My very, very, very good friend here, who's like a Ron uh, Ronkowski, Tom Brady in one when it comes to medical and science. And so that's my chip. I had to get that out. May I ask, with the, the mobile Yes, that's. Uh, There is, absolutely. The, the food mill works uh, under the umbrella of you grow, and they are all about just getting that bigger in the community, the healthier foods, the, the urban farming, the, all of those things. So that absolutely will be a part of it. Um, and another component will be just the, the fact that as a part of this mobile uh, farmer's market, they're going to do some just education and cooking demonstrations and other things. You know, a lot of times people will get these free healthy foods, then they sit at home and they don't ever use them. Um, and so we want to teach them, make sure, hey, this is, this is how you cook it and, and make it simple, make it easy, and then just do everything we can to help them not only get that food, but then to prepare it and, and have it for their families to eat. And you mentioned the uh, educate people about the urban gardens. Uh, uh, grow and uh, the, uh, the food mill just received one of the highest grants that was awarded, I think it was by the FDA, it's over $700,000. And the city is also partnering with them to try to make sure that they're doing some ancillary things, but it all fits neatly into the overall, the overarching goal of, of, of what the Mayor's Commission is doing. And that is trying to provide a healthier lifestyle and access to the things that will help you obtain a healthy lifestyle. We can even envision when we go out, when we put all of them rolling in one area, we'll call on some uh, corporate uh, citizens to bring a big grill out there and show these folks how to prepare this stuff so that it tastes good and they'll be, so many of these people in these food deserts, even the ones that have food, it comes in a bag, right? It comes, it's chips and it's crackers and it's stuff that is just not, you heard, I won't get into the medical stuff, but, but they don't have access to, to fresh grown vegetables. They don't have access to healthier, nutritious food. And where this, where, where part of the, this originated was talking to a vet scarper over at Fox Elementary. Some of the challenges they have at school with kids that just don't have enough to eat how they struggle to try to keep these kids in the level and help keep them moving towards where they need to be. And it's almost impossible if they don't have access to nutritious, healthy meals. One of the statistics that we saw early on as well was within the Columbus area, there are about 112,000 people that live in a food desert area with limited access to healthy, fresh foods. And that was a, a, a two-generational change. And that 
is part of where we are now. So if we could go back to encouraging people, not just to have access to it, but to help create it. Yes. And then what you're talking about, teaching people how to cook it, that's going to be crucial. Because in those two generations, we've forgotten how to do that. Thank well, you. And there are organizations that are working on the education piece. Matter of fact, there's uh, it's still in the negotiation uh, an RFP out of the old farmer's market. And at least one uh, idea was to try to return that to a farmer's market, a true farmer's market, where people that grow these, these urban the vegetables in urban gardens can bring them to sell them. But also an educational piece that teaches folks how they can go about it. So we're still kind of figuring out the details on that end. Um, so I, the short answer is I don't know exactly what it'll look like yet. Um, but it, it likely in those areas every week, but it may start with, you know, hitting some of those areas and then within a two or three weeks be in, in all of those areas. Here, here's what I, I hope the demand is so great for this that we're going to have to try to find a way to fund an additional vehicle in each 